All right, hey guys, Phil from PR Moves, back again for another video. Today we're doing the NFC South predictions. If you're wondering where I've been over the past eight days, I've been on vacation twice, and I've had two different sets of family members visit my house. I haven't had time to sit down and record multiple videos. Uh, I'm planning on getting the predictions out before the season starts. There's not really much to do. I have two highlight videos planned, so that's pretty much. I have four or five videos to do before season starts. I might react to the NBA draft. I might react to the NBA finals. Who knows? We're just doing what's fun right now. So uh, enjoy the video and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> see ya. All right. So we're starting off here. Fourth place in the division. We got the Atlanta Falcons. I think it was pretty obvious. The Falcons are going to be the worst team in this division. They have the worst offensive line in the division, worst running back in the division. Now they have the worst receiving core in the division, worst, uh, I don't know, quarterback with the least amount of upside, potentially, with Matt Ryan. I mean, he kind of is at his peak, maybe already descending from it, and they have the worst defense in the division. So Atlanta, I think, is very clear-cut the worst team in the division. I think the only things to be excited about are Defensive Player of the Year, Deion Jones, Rookie of the Year, Kyle Pitts, and potentially seeing Calvin Ridley uh, really break out. I do think Matt Ryan overall is the MVP because he'll probably have 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, but I think Calvin Ridley will probably finish a top seven receiver in terms of stats this year, probably targeted a lot. And I think Kyle Pitts has a really good chance of being the first tight end since Ditka to get 1,000 receiving yards in his rookie year. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I'm looking forward to. They got AJ Terrell in the secondary back there. Um, they lost both their safeties. They got Richie Grant, the rookie, back there as well. Not really looking forward to anything there. Um, as you can see, they only win against Philly week one, New Orleans week uh, nine, and I actually and yeah, Carolina week eight. I completely glossed over it. That's my bad. And so those are their only three wins. Um, and then prediction, and I 100% still believe this. Fal Falcon secondary ranks dead last in the league. No faith in their secondary. Um, uh, bold prediction, number one, Matt Ryan thrives in the Shanahan offense, and he throws 4,500-plus yards. And then the boldest prediction, uh, Kyle Pitts wins Rookie of the Year over Trevor Lawrence, Wilson, and Fields. That's the boldest prediction because I think if one of those three has a like career-defining season in their rookie year, because um, all three of those rookies are on teams that have sucked uh, quarterback-wise, then... Uh, they'll probably win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but if Kyle Pitts wins it over all three of them and, and they have good seasons, that'd be a pretty bold prediction right there. So, there you go. That's the Atlanta Falcons. There's not really much to talk about. 3-14 uh, and 14 overall record. They will potentially be looking at the number one overall pick, potentially looking to replace Matt Ryan or draft a generational defender uh, like Kayvon Thibodeau. Jumping in to the Carolina Panthers here. Um, a kind of unexpected um second to last i don't know i feel like carolina is really unlucky because they have the best team in the league in their division and i think if they didn't i think if you replace tampa with like minnesota in terms of talent in this division i think carolina is a playoff team um i do have them beating tampa bay once at home um because that was a good game last time out um Lose to Tampa the second time. They beat the Jets week one. Beat Houston, which is expected. They beat the Giants, who I think are a worse team. They beat Washington um, because they ha Washington hasn't beat Carolina in like the past five meetings. Uh, they beat Atlanta because Atlanta's pretty bad. Um, and then they beat Tampa. So one, two, three. You'll, you'll see their uh, win prediction later. As you can see, MVP Christian McCaffrey. Same with the Offensive Player of the Year there too. Um, not really much to expect from anyone else on that offense with uh, Sam Darnold. You don't know what to expect, so picking McCaffrey as the MVP and Offensive Player of the Year is certainly the safe pick. And then Brian Burns, such an under... He's a top 10 edge rusher already, and he's just going into his third season. He's so underrated. Um, he's easily... I think he's just as good as uh, Nick Bosa is right now. People overrate Nick Bosa so much. Um, and, I mean, you saw that in my NFC... Uh, West video when I gave Fred Warner the uh, defensive player of the year over Nick Bosa. So Brian Burns, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, JC Horn. Um, I do think the uh, 
Panthers, any of their like first five rookies could be their rookie of the year. That's how good of a draft they had. And then most improved player, Shaq Thompson, he's kind of that safety linebacker hybrid. And I think when this whole defense gets better, he'll be one of the main reasons it gets better. Um, looking at those predictions, the Panthers have a top 10 offense, even with Darnold throwing under 4,000 yards. I think McCaffrey and uh, third or fourth round pick, Chuba Hubbard, even fit maybe fifth round pick, I don't exactly remember. Chuba Hubbard, they explode and um, have one of the best running games in the league. Um, bold prediction number one, Shai Smith, their sixth round rookie out of South Carolina, has more receiving yards than Terrace Marshall. Um, basically made this prediction because Shai Smith is much more of a pure slot receiver than Terrace Marshall, at least at the NFL level. And um, I think when you uh, look at how their receiving room is constructed, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore can play in the slot, so can Robbie Anderson, so can David Moore, who they signed. Terrace Marshall can't really, but I don't think he'll play outside all that much anyway. Shai Smith's a pure slot, and I think it'll really be um, Smith and David Moore switching in and out of the slot with Anderson and DJ Moore on the outside for Darnold. And then the bold prediction number two, boldest prediction, McCaffrey wins MVP with 2,500 total yards, pretty similar to Adrian Peterson's MVP. Of course, boldest prediction, don't think that's going to happen. I have Mahomes winning MVP, saw that in the last video. But Panthers, overall, they're going to finish with a 7-10 and record. They're going to be third in the division. They'll probably be a top 15 pick, and there will probably be some people asking for Matt Rule to get fired, even though he's on a six-year uh, coaching contract so I mean this was a really long process for the Panthers to recover from their Super Bowl loss and I actually think Matt Rule is heading in the right direction I think as New Orleans gets worse and Tampa Bay will get worse hopefully after this season um, you'll see the Panthers really become one of the figureheads of the division here so Carolina 7 and 10 and I think they'll be competitive in most of their games this year New Orleans um, not really a team I'm super excited about because I don't like this team and I'm probably a little bit biased when I'm talking about them, um, but I try to be as unbiased as possible. Um, of course, you can see here they lose week one to Green Bay. Ah, there you go. Little spoiler right there. Uh, <laughs> they lose to Green Bay. They lose to New England week three. Um, they actually have a pretty solid start to the season, but it kind of falls apart here when they start playing solid teams. Lose to Seattle. Lose at home to Atlanta. Atlanta always plays them tough, so I thought Atlanta would probably steal a game from them. Lose to Buffalo, who I think is better. Lose to Dallas, who I think offense is just going to overpower them. Lose to Tampa, lose to Miami, lose to Carolina. All teams that I think are going to be very competitive or better than them this year. So they do get some surprising wins, too. They beat Tennessee, who I now have a winning record with Julio Jones. They beat Washington. They beat the Giants. So Saints not necessarily a bad team. They're just an average one. Average QB. Good running back, good, uh, really good running back, really good offensive line, really good head coach. Receivers are extremely subpar outside of Michael Thomas. No longer have Emmanuel Sanders. It's going to be Traquan Smith. And is it that Harris dude? Who's their returner? I guess he's their wide receiver three. Um, but you can see Alvin Kamara have winning the MVP and the offensive player of the year. I think he's going to be getting a lot of touches, whether it's Taysom or... Uh, Jameis as the starting QB. Defensive player of the year, Demario Davis. I think their secondary is going to really regress without their secondary coach, Gerald Alexander, no longer on the roster. Um, I think their front seven. No Trey Hendrickson coming off the edge, which means they're going to push... Um, who the heck is their uh, guy opposite? Uh, Cam Jordan. Going to push him into more minutes. Uh, he's the dude that they drafted like three years ago. I can't remember his name. I'm so sorry, Saints fans. Um, I knew his name when I was making this um, list. But Trey Hendrickson was their third edge rusher and arguably their best edge rusher out of the three. And he's gone. Um, Cam Jordan has regressed. He's a really good run defender. He's not as much of a pass rush threat. They don't really have a big interior guy to uh, like really anchor that defense. So I think Demario Davis is going to do a lot of good things. Um, they also lost Alex Hands alone. But then you get to the bold predictions here. Um, as you can see, most improved player, Jameis. Jameis throws 4,100 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. I think that'd be a pretty good season for him. And then Paulson Adebo winning that defensive uh, rookie of the year for this team, or the rookie of the year in general. I think that was an excellent pick, much better than their first 
pick in the draft, which I think was uh, that uh, Peyton Turner kid out of Houston. He's He'll be fine. He'll be a pretty good uh, edge rusher. It's just not something I really expected him to make. That's not a pick I didn't think they needed to make. So Jameis, Paulson Adebo at that rookie of the year most improved player. And then finally, Bulls prediction, Taysom Hill has 15 total touchdowns. That's not talking about passing. That is block, blocked punt return, punt return, catching, receiving. I think he's going to get even more touches now that Drew Brees is gone. So Saints overall, they go 8-9. and nine. They're going to be second in the division, and they barely will miss the playoffs. They're going to be a game off from the playoffs, and a lot of Saints fans are going to be really thinking – uh, long and hard about how they want to move forward this season. So, do I think Sean Payton really gets fired? No, I don't think anything like that's going to happen. I think they're going to give him the benefit of the doubt that they lost their Hall of Fame um, c- quarterback. So, um, really not much to worry about here. So, Saints. By the way, it's Marcus Davenport. That's why I kind of lingered there. Marcus Davenport uh, is opposite of Cam Jordan. He is really more of a run defender. At least he was last year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Saints fans. I did watch quite a few of your games. Um, and they brought in Trey Hendrickson as that third down edge rusher, and he really benefited from that. They don't really have that anymore unless they think rookie Peyton Turner will step in and do that role. And we move on to the Buccaneers. Um, This team is overpowered. They're a super, I mean, they're a super team. I think... They could easily win the next two Super Bowls. I, I, I 100% believe that. This roster is so good. Um, they're so well balanced. You can see here they only lose this game to New Orleans and the game to Carolina, which we already saw. Um, I don't really see they're, they're a game that they lose. Be, okay. Dallas's defense. Dak's first game back. Offensive line's first game back. Zeke's first game back. There's no way Dallas wins that. That'd be a miracle win. Atlanta sucks. Rams. Um, this is one of the only games I see them losing. This will be one of the best games of the year, but with the Rams losing a ton of defensive starters and their defensive coordinator, I'd see them not being able to keep up with Tom. New England just doesn't have the talent to keep up with them. Miami, definitely not even with Tua with this defense. Philadelphia, Jalen Hurts can't keep up with this defense. Chicago, probably Justin Fields can't keep up with this defense. Washington, Fitzpatrick can't keep up with the defense, and they won't be able to um, outmuscle. They'll probably just outmuscle the Washington Week secondary. The Giants, Daniel Jones can't keep up with the defense. Indy, this is another game I could see being really close because the Indianapolis offensive line is really good. I don't think Indy's receivers are good enough to get separation against the secondary in Tampa here. Atlanta sucks. Um, this will be another close game. I just see it. I just think Tom Brady's experience gets them over that. New Orleans, not very good. Of course, they lose that. Jets suck. Carolina at home, they don't lose that. I mean, that's just... What is What are most of these teams going to do against a team that has played an entire year together? If they're healthy, they will be the best team in the league by far. So you can see Tom Brady's the MVP, but I think Chris Godman on the franchise tag is going to be absolutely phenomenal. I think he'll be a top five receiver stat-wise. That's how good I think Chris Godwin will be. I think he'll be the number one option. Um, I think Mike Evans might not even crack 1,000 yards. I know that's stupid to say because he's cracked it for 1,000 straight years. But when you're sitting there, Godwin's going to be a better receiver. I think Antonio Brown's going to be an overall better receiver. You're going to have um, Gronk and OJ Howard, who's the most improved player, and Cameron Bray taking uh, red zone touches. And then you are going to have Jalen Darden and um, the uh, dude who caught a big pass over Kevin King, uh, Scotty Miller taking um passes over the top out of the slot i don't think uh mike evans is gonna get a lot of touches i think he'll fall to be the receiver two that plays opposite of chris godwin the receiver one godwin with a huge year Devin's player of the year devin white great in coverage great at rushing the pa- even at great at rushing the passer um fifth best linebacker in the league by my rankings that'll probably be another video that comes out excellent season for him jalen darden Rookie of the year, best rookie they drafted, in my opinion. Absolutely love Jalen Darden. And then OJ Howard, most improved player. We're going to wrap this up really quick here. Bucks have a top three offense and defense. Pretty self explanatory. Bucks have over four players with 400 yards receiving Evans, Godwin, AB, OJ Howard. I can 100% see that. And then with three of these, could have 1,000 yards. I think OJ Howard is so. I spelled his name wrong. I think OJ Howard's so underrated. He was Tom Brady's favorite target before he got injured last year. And then Jalen Darden leads all rookies in yards, being the boldest prediction. Don't think it'll happen with how stacked this receiver core is, but definitely possible. 15 and 2. 
number one record in the conference and how did they get a bottom five schedule this isn't fair it isn't fair all right i want to talk to you guys all next time i've rambled a little bit too much in this video i just enjoy talking football with you guys i'm gonna to try to get one more video out this week um and i'll talk to you guys all as soon as possible thank you for sticking around and thank you for the support love you all see ya